What's up everyone? James here to talk to you about my first impressions of Black Myth Wukong. I was super hyped to finally get to be able to play this after four years. Full disclosure, I didn't get a review code or early access. I had to buy this with my own money. So all of these impressions are my own. I have roughly six to seven hours of gameplay and I'm located on the final boss of chapter one. For those that don't have time to listen to this full video, I'm gonna be absolutely honest. Here's the long and short of it. The games, I'm, I'm liking it a lot. It's incredible. For what I've experienced it, it's incredible. It's everything that I wanted it to be and a little bit more. Now that that's out the way, I'm gonna give you guys that don't want spoilers an opportunity to leave because you're going to see actual gameplay of the game itself in chapter one. So if you don't wanna see any of that, then you know slide out. It was a pleasure to have you. In regards to technical issues, I've seen several online, but right now I've yet to personally experience anything too crazy. I have had some minor screen tearing, but that was fixed once I got into the NVIDIA experience and ensured V-Sync was actually turned off. Plus, I want to say the day the game launched, there were some drivers that were released that hopefully rectified a lot of those other issues that the mass populace was experiencing. I, however, again, didn't have a bunch of them. Since we're talking tech, this game graphically is absolutely gorgeous. I'm running the game with a 3080 Ti and it's doing pretty well. I just had to do some minor adjustments, but the game is gorgeous. You're going to need a nice system to play this. I can't stress that enough. I also have an ally rog, which I plan on testing this on, but I haven't had the opportunity yet. And I can't speak to how great this game is on PS5. Nobody I know has it currently on PS5. That being said, the game mechanically only has one difficulty. And I want to express this before we get super deep. This is not a Souls game. It is an AARPG or an ARPG. It has two whole souls mechanics in it, and we're going to talk about those later on in the video, but I just wanted to level set so everybody understands it's not a souls game. Story wise, Black Myth Wukong is a rehash of a story called A Journey to the West, which is rooted in Chinese mythology. The game opens up with us playing as Sun Wukong, affectionately known as the Monkey King. In the opening cutscenes, you have been summoned to the court where we learn that our favorite deity has entered into combat with his brother and the celestial court. Through some narrative exchange, Sun Wukong is enraged by them killing his kind and the court is upset due to him not following orders. Side note, this is your tutorial area where you are introduced to a lot of the fundamental combat mechanics in the game. Once you get later on the game, you quickly realize that this isn't the entirety of your combat toolkit, but it is a good fundamental baseline set. The battle ensues, but when you attempt to leave, your godly powers falter and you're struck with a deadly blow sent plummeting to the ground. Time passes and we see an older monkey that's been telling the story ensuring the people know to collect six artifacts and return to this very spot in order to attempt to revive Sun Wukong. Now at this point, we finally get to see our true selves. We're not playing as Sun Wukong, which I thought we were. We'll be playing as an individual known as the Destined One who will be embarking on a journey up this mountain to find the relics and to bring them back to this very place. Now we get to play the game. For what I can tell, it's divided into chapters. And once you finish a chapter, you will be moved on to the next area. Within these chapters, you'll journey on through a somewhat linear game experience. I say somewhat because the level designs actually are not open world, but not exactly linear. In short, you still take exploration serious and search off the beaten path to locate various collectibles, chests, secrets, and tons of mini bosses. Again, as you've heard previously, this game has a boss every 15 minutes. In our six to seven hour playthrough, we fought eight bosses or seven bosses, which isn't exactly every 15 minutes, but it just shows the density of the bosses in the game. Make sure you explore. I say that because you had the option to ring three large bells within the area, which unlocks a teleporter that takes you to a place where you receive quite a bit of collectibles and more items. The large takeaway is the area is not wholly linear, so make sure you walk around, explore, and hit things. Exploration is cool, but what's really dope is the actual combat, and the combat here is quite nice. You'll have a ton of customization options and ways to tailor your playstyle to you. You will receive XP from exploring, killing mobs, and fighting bosses, which in turn levels you up and a spark is earned. You can utilize that to upgrade and pick options that you feel are most ideal for your playstyle. You are not limited to just receiving sparks via leveling, but can find them in the open world at a meditation point. Once your spark is acquired, you have roughly seven talent trees to redeem sparks in. For example, Stamina, Martial Arts, and Survival. 
that's three of the seven some of the options that you can spec into are basic like increased health pool increased damage with light attack reduced damage when using charge abilities but you do have some more aggressive options like combo unlock and heavy strike combo conditions you can also use your sparks to upgrade spells spells may be upgraded this way but not acquired this way you'll have to obtain them via progressing the story the first spell you get is the immobilize spell this stops enemies in place which is extremely effective especially when you can upgrade to cause enemies to receive more damage in that state i want to say that the severity of the enemy type may cause diminishing returns of the spell which i think is rather strong in the beginning of the game especially when you're able to combine this with armor that gives you additional damage to enemies in this state this game also has a mana system which makes sense seeing as how you are casting spells but i've yet to figure out how to renew mana outside of resting at the shrine which is our first souls mechanic item replenishment at the shrine one of two no renewal over time no item or armor perks just good old shrine resets game science opted to continue impress me with the addition of transformations unlike spells and various combo upgrades you obtain these from beating mini bosses that you've located throughout exploration again make sure you explore these transformations are characters that you are able to fully turn into each transformation has various perks combat styles and use cases in order to transform you have to fill up a gauge which recharges over time once done you'll be able to transform into that particular being yes its health bar is specific to itself along with its own combos in this state you'll be giving the destined one a brief reprieve health wise but still be able to continue to fight they continue to add even more depth to the combat not all mini bosses are created equally and we see that with the introduction of spirits these are mini bosses that are defeated but instead of being rewarded with a transformation you'll be given the signature move of the boss to use when your meter has filled this meter is entirely separate from your manner for casting spells and your meter for transforming the first one i came across was the buddha once defeated you'll be able to absorb him into your flask then use his ability in battle to trigger an aoe move knocking enemies back as you continue to explore you'll find another mini boss that has several projectile attacks once defeating him you'll be able to use his signature move to summon snakes that shoot poison projectiles this was very helpful against fast moving enemies the last mini boss also dropped a vessel vessels are items that we can activate to give us a specific effect this particular vessel grants us the immunity to fire i want to say that lasts for 10 to 15 seconds which was a huge buff against the final boss in this area who as you've guessed does fire damage i am definitely a fan of being rewarded for my time and exploring especially when it provides me an intentional one-up on a boss again make sure you guys are exploring having all of these abilities and determining when to utilize them at the opportune moment does combine to some really dope combos and combat sequences and i imagine this will get better with time seeing as how we continue to discover and explore in this world we also have some additional items as well you'll have a flask which provides individual use until we rest at a shrine we can upgrade the type of drinks in the flask and augment them for additional effects utilizing soaks from a merchant in the area the shrine resting to replenish flask is again a souls like mechanic you'll also have access to armor weapons and curios armor becomes available in sets as you defeat bosses and hit certain story beats each boss has an armor set that can be crafted via the shrine as of now the armor does look linear in that you won't have the option to modify or augment them later on but they still offer quite a bit of value seeing as how this armor does have set bonus some will provide you bonuses of having two pieces on or all four as of now i can't tell if the set bonuses are enough to offset some of the defensive losses you would receive from other armors i think you should note that you can mix and match armor sets to achieve the bonuses of two different armors that you find complementary to each other and your playstyle. Then we have weapons. Certain item drops off bosses that allow you to upgrade your staff. I'm not entirely sure if you get other weapons later on, but right now through exploration and what I'm at and where I'm at in the game, I can't say for sure. I honestly am not expecting to see any additional weapons with how the staff has been the focal point of many of the trailers and a huge focal point within the lore of a journey to the West itself curios are what this game calls accessories they offer many different perks i'm not entirely sure if we'll be able to add additional ones but right now i currently have two and again you obtain these from fighting bosses and exploring the overworld make sure you are exploring the overworld 
All of these things combine to create a really flushed out and integrated combat style, allowing you to really lean into how you wanna play or experiment with your player. I mean, even if you don't like how your person is spec'd out, you have the option to literally go to any shrine and respec without resource consumption. Game Science did a really good job with combat fluidity, in my opinion. Really leaning into the mantra of them wanting each boss to be a new challenge to the player and enforcing you to have to use your toolkit to achieve victory however you feel possible. My particular play style is using the immobilize spell with the spirit ability to put poison on enemies while I'm fighting. Yes, I even took the armor that gives you extra damage to any enemy that is immobilized. I like to create an opening using dodge and if done correctly, we leave behind a phantom, which does continue to aggro the enemy. Utilizing dodge is a key skill in the game and I believe as you continue to upgrade it, you'll see an incredible return. To pull this all together for a general impressions, honestly, I have to say the game has been fantastic. The combat has felt really responsive and very rewarding for hitting those dodges and using your entire toolkit. It's fun, responsive, fast and engaging and you feel like a badass for hitting combos. I also wanna make it clear I'm playing this game under the lens of it being an ARPG and not a Souls anything, which I think is the intent of game science. I think that is truly one of the most important parts here. From a technical standpoint, I haven't run into major issues so far and I hope it stays that way throughout my playthrough. We'll revisit that in my full comprehensive review. As long as the game continues offering meaningful progression and doesn't become stale or overly linear, Black Myth Wukong could become something incredibly special. Game of the year, who knows, but we will deep dive into that in my full review. Make sure to like and sub for more content. I'll be bringing you guides and a comprehensive review, but just don't take my word for it. I'm a random dude on the internet. Other than that, I'm out. Peace.